Good morning. It's Greg Chambers, uh, Go Leads Marketing Solutions. And uh, today, what we're going to do is it's 11 o'clock and we try to start right on time um, and go for a half hour roughly. <laughs> I will try to uh, not be so wordy on this. The, uh, the reason you're here is because we're going to talk about landing pages. Um, specifically in this, uh, this is like the seventh or eighth of the lead, a piece of our lead generation series. And we're just taking different parts of uh, lead generation that we've been, that we use to help people and to help ourselves generate leads. And we're going to talk about uh, what it is that we figured out internally. So that's what this is uh, today. So welcome. And uh, if you're unfamiliar with Zoom, the, there's a chat section and that's monitored by uh, Nui and um, Nui helps me keep track of all these so that I don't lose them over time. And then there's also a Q&A section, and I will check that at the very end uh, uh, after I run through the, the six simple steps. Um, my little alliteration there will uh, we'll run through that. So let me get to the right place. Today's agenda, what we're going to do, we'll start with uh, basically kind of defining, defining these terms, what we mean by landing page. Um, we'll to go through news of, uh, there's some noteworthy news I wanna share with you. Uh, the six simple steps and then we'll wrap it up and um, I'll give you the handouts, which, well, the handouts will actually come to you in, the, in an email that gets sent usually at the beginning of uh, the following week, which is going to be on um, Monday. So if there's anything you're hoping I cover today, you can ask that question inside the chat. It goes to Nui, privately, I think, uh, and then she can make it public or do that. You can share it with the whole group and then I'll make sure to uh, cover it when, when the time comes. So let's talk about this news of note. There's this article that got uh, emailed to me uh, by Bill Matern and he was, it's about these, this new proposed data privacy law. And this guy thinks it's going to be a regulatory disaster. But what he likens it to is this whole uh, GDRP. If you've not been, or GDPR, GDRP, GDPR, uh, the laws that took place in, in Europe, if you start getting a whole bunch of um, update to our policies, notifications in your email uh, earlier this year, uh, as the summer was going on, it was everybody trying to comply with the European Union's uh, data laws. And this person is saying, you know, it's what would happen if this went the same state by state by state. Um, and what a mess that would be to try to regulate it. So it's like, if, if, the, if you thought the uh, GDPR, GD, see I did it right there, GDRP, GDPR is, was going to be difficult to comply with. Um, if you had European business, what happens if it's all 50 states? All this, the reason I brought this up with uh, landing pages is because landing pages, um, one of the things that's inside here is it shows Facebook on the little picture there is Facebook and Google. A lot of us are relying on them to help with uh, list management and uh, we're marketing to the list that they've helped compile for us. And if privacy laws get tightened and consumers can, uh, consumers and businesses can lock themselves down a little bit, the, it really takes it almost back to uh, our time in the seventies, which is what, what we're, what is our internal database doing and how are we making that manage? So, or how are we managing that? Basically, how is our list marketing game? How is our internal list marketing game? Um, and compiling, uh, complying with the rules that they set forth. That is loose, loosely affiliated with what we're going to be talking about, which is landing pages, which is um, you need to be adding people to your database, I guess is, is the whole point of this. And so this is how we're going to be uh, starting. We're going to run through six simple steps. And it looks like Nui asked her, or she just made a comment in there. Um, six simple steps. We're going to talk about choosing, but choosing wisely. We're going to talk about uh, three parts um, to, uh, we'll talk about different types of landing pages and we'll go through three parts and speed. We'll cover speed. We'll talk about upcycling our old stuff. We'll uh, address the question, should we? Because we get asked this a lot. What, should we be doing this? Should we be doing that? And then we're going to talk about spying on the smart rich kids uh, who have things going on. So let's jump into number one. Do you remember this from the uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark? I think it was the third one, The Last Crusade, where the old man, <laughs> we get to choose the grail, choose but choose wisely. There's, when we think of 
landing pages, one of the things that we had to do internally is the more of us that dealt with trying to build landing pages, we had to, what we came up with the uh, conclusion is that there's actually multiple kinds of landing pages. First of all, there's the search optimized. So if we were just optimizing for the search engines, there's a type of landing page that we would build that is uh, trying to attract organic traffic. And then it's different though from what you do with paid ads um, and optimizing a landing page for paid, for paid ads. And what we end up doing in here is we kind of shoot the gap um, at GoLeads and we do uh, more of a hybrid approach. So let me explain that a little bit uh, deeper. With search optimized ads, so this one I did, it was uh, how to build SEO friendly landing pages. I think it was a search optimized uh, landing pages. And if you pulled that page up, it's a page from Instapage that shows up as number one on uh, that particular search. It's a long post, right? It's, it's optimized for the search engines. It's 2,500 words. It's very comprehensive. It has a lot of sections, a lot of graphics along the way as they try to teach you how to build SEO friendly landing pages. And the call to action, there's a little call to action up in the corner, which is try Instapage. Um, and then at the bottom, there's a book that they have, which is their second call to action. So that would be what I would consider a search optimized landing page. They know the types of keywords that they're trying to rank for, and they are working to get those organically. So they have invested in a lot of content around that and then testing that content over time for the search engines. On the other side, doing those, a very similar search, Insta, this is still Instapage, the same, it's a landing page company that uh, they build, they have a tool that lets you ramp up landing pages real quick and uh, we've used that internally. It works really well because it's got a bunch of templates and you can test things really quick. The, uh, but if we're buying paid traffic, so when I clicked on the paid ad, it sent me to this. And the one thing you'd notice is that it, I, I'm being generous if I say that there's 300 words on that page and the click to action is the very first thing you see, or the call to action, I'm sorry. The call to action is the very first thing you see, right? Build a powerful landing page pro, uh, platform and you need to try it right now, right? Free trial and uh, there's a few reasons why and a few uh, examples of customers, but it's really geared towards converting you right up front. Where we play most of the time is we will use search optimized pages where we know that th what the terms are that we're trying to rank for. The challenge is, and we'll get into this, the challenge is a lot of times we don't know exactly what we're trying to rank for. So when we try to build search and search optimized pages, a lot of people have approached us and built these for us and we end up optimizing for anything, right? We say, well, roughly it's gotta be around here somewhere. So we're gonna build a bunch of search optimized pages and it doesn't work. Paid ads, on the other hand, you can drive traffic immediately. You can get results but you're paying for it, right? Uh, you have to, every click that you buy, you're paying for. So what you'd love to do is to have the mixture of the worlds. When we're building landing pages, a lot of times what we're doing is we're trying to shoot the gap. We're trying to take our best guess on the search optimize and build some search optimized con content, but we're also driving traffic through paid ads and we're actually testing um, the words that we think that we're supposed to be there. And so we have call to action up front. So our first step in, up in getting better at building landing pages is we'd suggest using this, uh, using these three ideas. Like what are we trying to do on this? Is this one that we know absolutely is going to be, um, it converts for us and this is where our customers are playing and we know how to convert them. That's search optimized. And so we're going to build uh, that page a little differently than we will the paid ad. Uh, optimization. So Instapage, just as a for instance, when we use Instapage um, with clients, we've used it more on the paid ad side uh, for a few reasons that we'll talk about. But we end up, it's mostly call to action focused. Um, and then what we're trying to do is we're trying to record those keywords. So if you've sat through any of the other presentations we've done on AdWords or anything else where we're trying to look for search terms, that is uh, what we do under uh, under the hybrid side. So we're trying to mix those two things. So make sure you're doing what you're doing. You know what you're doing. And if you have to default to a hybrid page, know that you're doing it upfront and that it really isn't, uh, it isn't a great example of search optimized or paid ad optimized. It's kind of a, a best guess in the middle. 
How about this? Uh, step two is three parts. So when thinking about those search engine optimized landing pages, um, this is the way that we approach those pages is we uh, consider them, right? There's going to be content on the page um, that is uh, relates to the search that, that the intent of the user as they're doing their search that answers their questions and helps them make good decisions. There's the code on the page, which is right, really built for the search engines so that we can be found on the search engines. And then there's links to the page, which help tell the search engines, hey, uh, this content and this code so that you've combed the page, but uh, the, the votes are coming in from the public linking to this page saying, hey, this is where uh, this is going to be valuable for this particular search, right? So that's a really bad, a bad description of how the search engines work. But let's explore this graphic just a little bit. So if you have good content on your web page and you have good code, that's all you really need for a lot of long tail terms. And when I say long tail, if you've ever seen that, uh, the, the long tail concept, um, if the graphic that goes from a high demand to low demand, a lot of those long tail terms are very valuable to us. And so we use them a lot. Um, we're always searching for them because there's not a lot of competition and we can get there by building good content and making sure the page is coded correctly. Um, so actually that's when you think of all the traffic that's happened on Go Leads, that's really where, uh, this is where we generate almost all of our uh, inbound business is by just having uh, decent content um, about answering a particular question and it's coded correctly. On the other hand, if you have great content and you have links, um, there's a good chance if you haven't coded the page properly that you're missing opportunities. And that's all that's saying. So uh, oftentimes there is great content out there and it's being linked to, but when it's not coded correctly, the search engines don't like to mess around with it. Um, conversely, if you have great coding and you have a lot of links, but the content is bad, uh, there's a good chance that even though you're driving traffic to it, it's going to miss conversions and that won't be, uh, what you're looking for. So the, the holy grail is right, is you have a healthy mix of great content, it's coded correctly, and you have a lot of links coming in. And that's for competitive high traffic terms. So what I wanted to point out to you here is the the hint is, oh, I hit too many buttons, is that top one, content and code, is really the, the only place you need to start. Um, if you're not looking for those high traffic competitive terms. If you're trying to rank pages for high traffic competitive terms, it's, uh, it's a lot of work, but in the between time, if you start with great content that's coded correctly and drive traffic through there and it converts, um, that helps pay for all the rest of the efforts to get to the rest of them. So that's our, that's our big hint right there is, um, we say, look at the, you know, in the mix, the easiest is number one, hardest is number four. So focus on content and code uh, is hint number two. Uh, step three, I guess it's six steps. Those aren't six hints, but the pay-per-click landing pages, right? So if we go back to the, uh, the previous slide where we were talking about the difference between a search engine optimized landing page and a pay-per-click optimized landing page, <clears throat> this relates to the pay-per-click landing page. And basically what we know is that we know that um, we need to be consistent through as we're driving traffic, right? So I, the, our internal uh, acronym is TACO, TACO. Um, it's too bad it's not tachos. If you've ever had uh, tater tot nachos, tachos, but it's the TACO. And it is, um, it starts with the term, right? What is the term that we're after? Then the ad needs to match the term the headline needs to match the term in the ad. The copy needs to support the term, the ad, and the headline. And then the last thing you have is an offer. So as long as there's consistency through there, you're probably doing a good job with your landing page. So that's, uh, that's probably obvious to you, but the, uh, it's something that we look at as we're going through and building ads and pages. Um, the copy needs to focus on outcomes. So when we're building the copy on our landing page, one of the things that we're 
uh, focused on is not what we do, but what the uh, prospect is going to get, right? So if we have built an ad and we can focus on the outcomes, people buy outcomes, customers buy outcomes. So that's what we're uh, focused on inside the copy. So these are the, the hints to build these pages. We want a strong call to action. Um, we have a, a couple examples of people that it, they know what the strong call to action is, but they don't want to do it um, because we know that anything that we can give away for free that has a high perceived value, um, but ideally a low cost to us is the best type of uh, object to, to give away, right? Or the type of product or service. So the stronger the call to action, the better the pay-per-click landing pages because people are, uh, they're usually out searching, looking for things. And then the last piece that we use when we're building content on the page is the at a glance rule, which is if you uh, are picking through, oh, and Roy Strand, I could show actual examples. The actual example of which one? Do you wanna see actual examples of each one of these? Um, Cause what I'll do is I'll run through them and then we can go back and I can show, I can pull up some examples um, that I've took the little pictures of if that helps. But the at a glance rule is can you peek at that landing page and at a glance tell what it is. So the difference between a search engine optimized landing page and a pay-per-click optimized landing page is the pay-per-click landing page you can usually, uh, you, you get the gist of it just by glancing at it, whereas the search engine optimized one is really built to educate uh, long term. And then you got to test, test, test. The challenge with all this is you could do every single one of these things, but if your page isn't fast, um, it's not going to work when it comes to pay-per-click landing pages. So one of the reasons why we used Instapage while we're testing is because Instapage has, uh, has shown time and time again that they can build very fast landing pages for us. So faster than the ones that we can build internally and fast loading is what Google is. So if you use the Google PageSpeed, if you just search for Google PageSpeed, the Google PageSpeed insights, you can put in the page that you're trying to market that you're trying to use uh, as your landing page and it will give you some scores. So in that case, I uh, pulled up the uh, lead gen compass, which is a new site that we've built. And for on the mobile, it's fast, but on the desktop, you can see it kind of gives a little orange exclamation point where it tells us that there's some things that we need to do to help make that page um, faster. So pay-per-click landing pages, the the step to success is uh, make sure it's fast. Whereas on the other pages, uh, that's maybe not as uh, big of a concern. All right, uh, upcycle the old stuff. In this concept here, page, we're gonna talk about content flow because as people have been adding content to their pages over the years, um, the first thing we start with is uh, customer questions, right? So we go to, uh, our customers and we say, hey, uh, customers, uh, what, is it that the question, what are the questions that you're getting from your customers? So our clients will tell us these are the most common questions, right? They survey the salespeople. These are the common questions that we get. And then we start building content around those pieces, right? So if we can put, uh, if your actual customers are asking your salespeople and your customer service people questions, if you can get, that means that they're asking those same questions of the internet, of Google, and so we can get them, right? So we can put the term out there, we can put a blog around it, and then we can test the term with pay-per-click. So we can say, is there anybody searching for this? And um, now part of this is I'm assuming that you've actually, uh, that maybe you have uh, did one of our AdWords webinars before, and in the AdWords webinar, what we talked about is the reason we use pay-per-click is because we can see what the actual search term is so that we know whether or not the term is, is generating some, uh, is going to convert for us. So when we talk to, uh, when we build the content, we end up blogging around it, we surround it with more content, we watch analytics, and then what ends up happening over time is that we see old posts with no traffic. So if you're using Google Analytics and you pull up the landing page report um, and there's pages you don't see that have, that they've not driven any new traffic from, for I'd say six months to a year, then they need to go into the upcycling program. And what is the upcycling program? Um, the easiest way to think about it is 
think about it in terms of writing a book. One of the uh, great examples of a content-driven search engine page, Moz, uh, the search engine optimization company, they built their whole business on this type of content, which is, so this one is uh, their highest ranking page, which is the beginner's guide to SEO. And if you look at it, it's basically a book. It, it tells you everything you need to know about how to do search engine optimization. So it's, uh, it's like a course. Um, and it's just available to anybody who comes to the page. But these are all the questions that they've been asked over the years. And when you really break that down, it's really a bunch of individual blog posts that have been compiled together into a uh, single document. So you can either click through all the pages or if you click on that red corner, which is download the PDF, that's usually where you have to uh, sign in. I don't know if they still have the gate in front of it, but you'd put in your email address to get the PDF because it's a lot easier to read than trying to do it online. And in exchange for that, you've just paid for it with your uh, email address. So when we're asked to help with sites, oftentimes we see old content that has been put out there and nobody's touched it for a long time and it's really not doing anything. Instead of creating brand new content, oftentimes all we can, what we need to do is we need to upcycle the old stuff. We need to take the old content, break it into chunks of this is topics that we've been writing about and then make some super posts trying to drive it um, on the ones that are uh, attaching it to the ones that are driving more traffic, if that makes sense to you. Uh, so in this case, the actual example is if you go just type in Moz Beginner's Guide to SEO or uh, type in a guide to SEO, and usually the Moz is, uh, this post is one of the top uh, three or four searches that are on there. So that's step four is take any old content that's not performing and run it up into uh, new pieces of content um, trying to create search engine optimized landing pages. This question, should we? We get this all the time and it's generally around the lines of, hey Greg, should we uh, use video? Because I saw this uh, page on video. Or, you know, when we get to, when somebody lands on our page, should we interrupt them with a, a light box uh, request? So in this case, at Bloomingdale's, you can get 10% off your next order by giving them your email address. Or um, I see a lot more of these, uh, where you try to mouse off the page because you're going to either go back or maybe close the tab and then it, it it gives you an exit offer before you leave you know like in this case taft do you want to get 10 percent off your first purchase so 10 percent off seems to be the the call to action that they that the retailers have hung up on and so the question is should we try each of these uh different offers and the answer is um we need to test it and so the only way to run straight tests and get good tests is, uh, the, or the easiest way, is to do A-B testing. So A-B testing, if you're not familiar with it, is running uh, two variations of, uh, of something against each other, right? So if I had a regular Bloomingdale's page that people are uh, landing on like the homepage and I'm not using the light box, that's my A, and then I compare it to, I split the traffic and then I compare it to B, which is, you know, half the people are getting this uh, pop-up box. Um, simple A, B, right? We're not testing multiple variables. We're just trying to test one variable between A and B. But the trick is we need an A. And with a lot of our customers, it's hard to say if video is going to work better, if a pop-up is going to work better, or if an exit offer is going to work better than what they're doing currently because we've not stuck with anything long enough to get good information as to how it's performing. So for instance, that Salesforce cloud overview demo, that may be the A, it could be video, but we can't answer the question, is video better until we run another version that does not have video and send similar traffic to it? So Greg, you say that uh, how, many, how much traffic should we send to it? In general, you're looking for, um, if you can get at least 100, then, it, then it, you have a chance of being statistically significant. The challenge with a lot of our long tail terms, as you know, is that it takes a long time to get there, even when you're paying for traffic. So we try to balance those pieces of uh, trying new things with things that we know. We, you have to know at least how well it works before you can improve upon it, is the piece right there. And then uh, number six, the smart rich kid. If uh, this is, my shortcut for 
um, if I'm not really sure what to do. And actually, it kind of talks to, uh, to Roy's question here, which is uh, examples of landing pages as we're, if you're if you need inspiration on how to build or what to start with i always start with the smart rich kid right salesforce uh paypal uh, amazon any amazon landing pages and the idea is this is that um if salesforce right now if i, I went to their website just before this just to just to double check and when you look for job openings that have the word marketing in them there's 600 job openings. For most of the people that we work with, we don't have 600 people in our company, let alone 600 people that are tied into the marketing function or a dozen people who have landing page in their job description. So knowing that, it's not guaranteed, right? It's a shortcut, but in general, uh, if one of our larger companies is doing it, uh, there's a good chance that it's worth emulating at least to get started for yourself. So pick out ones that you think are working for them. So in this case I did, uh, these are all pay per click landing pages and based off of searches for uh, some of the, the larger, I was just searching for terms that I thought that Salesforce or PayPal or um, Amazon would be uh, interested in trying to sell. So in this case, cloud services or accepting, uh, you know, the, credit cards and um, a, a CRM. And so inside of each of these, by studying them, it gives us a good idea of where to start with. It's not guaranteed, right? It's a, it's a heuristic, it's a shortcut. Um, but if the big people are doing it, we should be curious about why it is that they're doing it, which reminds me, as you're doing your own um, marketing and you're looking for long tail terms, if you see any of these big companies, around any of the terms that you're searching for, um, you should be curious as to what it is that they're doing and why, the th why it is that they might be there. Like, how did their ads show up? Is it just because, uh, right? Just because they're uh, smart and rich doesn't mean that they're good at what they do. There's plenty of examples of big companies. Right now, there's a, if you're in the search engine optimization world, there's a lot of jokes around about uh, Google making fun of the, some of the Google product people not being very good at search engine optimization. I don't know how true it is, but um, just because you write the accomplished kids, just because you're doing it yourself doesn't mean you're great at it. Um, so we take all this with a grain of salt, but it's a great shortcut for um, moving forward and uh, getting unstuck off of pieces. Okay, so that was it. So I wanted to run through those quick six steps, right? The, uh, the first step, in and getting better at landing pages is deciding which type of landing page you're actually building. Is it is this one search engine optimized? The trick there is you need to know what you're optimizing for um, pretty specifically and have tested calls to action so that you can generate traffic there. Pay-per-click is a little bit easier because you can pay for the traffic um, and then you're really focused on making sure that the, the message is consistent or is it a hybrid which we do a lot which is we're kind of kind of take a guess while we're building this pay-per-click landing page we're going to go ahead and try to optimize it for the search engines just in case because uh we may be better off so it's easier to do the hybrid on search engine optimized pages if you could focus on content and technology before linking um, we find that that's the easiest way to get some of those long-term keywords producing um, quickly on there. Uh, if you're doing pay-per-click pages, then no matter what you do, you could make sure that it follows Tacho and that it's a, uh, or a taco <laughs> and uh, make sure that it uh, follows through so that the user intent is uh, obvious all the way through, but then make sure it loads fast because that's probably the most important thing. When somebody clicks on an ad, there can't be a delay. And Google actually fixed that because Google was doing some weird redirects that every once in a while took a page a little bit longer to load. They're going directly. They've uh, done some, I don't know, some sort of coding change, but it makes the page loads load, pages load faster. And that's in the new Google ads. So that's good. Um, upcycle your old stuff. As you're going through your old content, find that content. Um, if you're messing around with terms that you know are around what your people are searching for, you can take old content and repurpose it, uh, bring it together, we used to take three 
blog posts that were about the same concept and put it together into a white paper and use that white paper as a giveaway, but then also as um, uh, a long form content, cornerstone content, it's also called, uh, trying to see if we can get it to direct some new traffic and uh, get some links. Sometimes people think that that's worth linking up to. So that's upcycle. Um, should we do all these questions? that people ask, uh, the, the answer is always, I don't know, um, what's working for you now? And then let's see if it improves upon it. Um, so before we ever get to making the expensive video, uh, can we convert without video first? And then see if the video helps it on that part. And then if you're looking for ideas, spy out on the smart rich kid, uh, borrow uh, liberally. So on there, Roy, I didn't see if there was a, uh, a specific example that you wanted to see like of the type of page, but I can show you how I would go about finding one because I'll just pop open a browser if you're interested. But in the between time, let me go ahead and uh, give you these, uh, show you what these gifts are going to be. You will get a link to this. All examples are helpful. Um, okay, so have you seen, did, were these enough examples that you've seen so far or do you want to see some more? I'll ask you that while I roll through more than <laughs> Perfect. Let me do that for you real quick. These are uh, the giveaways that you're going to get. You'll get a Human Beings Guide to Business Growth book, which is a book I wrote to give you some ideas on uh, growing your business. Uh, the Perfect Growth Formula are for internal uh, conversations that you have, especially between marketing and uh, sales. And then Lead Gen Compass is actually our organization that we've, uh, our group that we've formed that really does nothing but these types of things like landing pages. So let me pull up my browser. Let me open a clean browser so you don't have to. Previously. Let me show you what I do to find examples of uh, landing pages. As we look at all these uh, pages, one of the challenges with it is it's hard to say what works because one of the things that we're missing is we can see the design, we can see the content, but it's hard to know what the strategy was on there. But let's look at, um, well, uh, one of our companies, US Farm Data. So an example of, let's see, berries, dairy farms, in Nebraska. So, uh, let me figure. Dairy farms. I'm not going to do a good job on this. But let's check out what these guys are doing. So, this would be an example of pay per click. Um, and let's see what it is that they do connect to what's real. So looking for dairy farmers, dairy's got it going on. So they're trying to get you to join. Like, so here's one, an example of, I don't know why, if I'm looking for dairy farmers in the US, right? The uh, Google is still trying to figure out, they're like, are you looking for dairy farmers of America? What is it that you're looking for? We'll throw some videos up here. Like, do you just need to know about how dairy farms work? What's advice for dairy farms? It's not a very Right, Google hasn't figured out from all their searches why people are really looking for this. Is it top dairy states? What state has, right? So they start asking like, hey, do you want more dairy farms? Do you need the largest dairy farm? Like, what is it that you're looking for? So it's broad. But the food, dairygood.org has decided that anybody who's looking for the word, I'm going to guess dairy, uh, deserves to take a peek at, at what this is. So this would be an example of they didn't exactly follow uh, taco on this in that um, if we're looking for dairy farms in the USA, the one piece we'd want to look for is like a list of large dairy farms. So now Google's trying to help us um, on here and they're trying to say, okay, how can we uh, help you make a better search here? So here's the like top dairy farm. So a list of dairy farms, but the number is 2015 dairy 100. So what's this an example of? This is an example of uh, long tail terms that know that there's not enough searches on for the law of large numbers to take effect. So Google is guessing the same as we're guessing as to what uh, the dairy farms are. Let's see. CRM for insurance. 
So here we go, Salesforce for insurance. So Salesforce will do a good job because I searched for sale for service, the first thing, right? Transform service engagement with the service cl financial cloud. So discover uh, tr build, building trust and relationships. So this whole thing is geared towards insurance carriers and customer service reps. So this is a great example of a pay-per-click uh, form, right? A strong call to action, but more importantly, is it loaded super fast and it speaks directly to what it is that I'm searching for. Um, going down into this, the top here. So we say Bitrix free CRM for insurance agents, best CRM, CRM for insurance. So these are uh, landing pages for results, right? And the reason we know it's a landing page is because it's not under Bitrix24.com. It's under uses, free CRM for insurance agents, and then this one goes into all the details of what it is that it's related around. But if we search, like I'm gonna guess if we search here for insurance, we show up at least seven times the word insurance, right? If we look at uh, the code where we say, where's the, the code, our H1 is free CRM for insurance agents. So CRM for insurance shows up in there. These are all the indicators that, uh, Google would use meta keywords. Keywords are really not as important, but this insurance uh, CRM for insurance that shows up in here. So there's a lot of indicators to Google that this would be a place to go. And then here we've got a call to action. So Jeffrey Abrams is ready to quote me a project already um, on there. So this would be a great example of a search engine optimized uh, piece of content. Uh, CRM for insurance agents and it's free, starts free. Uh, call. So, right, is that helpful to see? So I kind of talked through it really fast, but okay, good. Um, so those are some examples of, of how to make these things work and that's how we approach it when we're doing these projects too. So if, if it helps you, right? I know there's no secrets on this because like everything, right? It comes, it's disguised as a, shows up in overalls and it's disguised as hard work as they say. Um, that's the, that's just the challenge with doing any of these things. Um, and if you've listened to other webinars that we've done, the more you can measure, the easier it is to get the funding you need from the people that are controlling the pocketbooks to show that you're making some progress towards generating predictable uh, sales leads over time. So, uh, thanks for your question and thanks for, uh, everybody's attendance. And if you have any other questions, goleads.com. That's uh, obviously our business lists and other lists that we have, email lists and uh, such. Lead Gen Compass is the new company. We'd love to tell you more about that if you're interested um, in what we can do for you, kind of an outsource marketing program. And then if you have any questions, info at goleads.com. All right. I told you I'd take a half hour and somehow I got up to 38 minutes again. Have a great weekend and uh, we'll talk to you later. Thanks.